Hi everyone, it's Sammy Caps. How you doing? In today's video, I wanted to give you my impressions of the PTR after two days. Now, most of the talk has been around how positive the PTR has been and it being a step forward, and I totally agree with that. And although itemization has been the focus, I wanna to introduce to you something that I consider is an additional benefit that Diablo 4 players are going to experience because of these itemization changes in season four. In this video, we're gonna go over that topic. So I'll hope you join me and stick around. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, so what is it that I'm referring to? Well, the itemizational changes that have been made to Diablo 4 are very good. It provides players with the opportunity to add affixes to their gear and weapons. Therefore, it's some form of customization of building their character, making it stronger, being able to fine tune builds. In any ARPG worth its salt, that is a must. And these itemization changes that are coming to Diablo 4 in season four are most needed, absolutely. And I think it's a step in the right direction. But what I think is also going to be an unsung hero in season four is the new itemization loop. And we're going to talk about that in this video. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that is this. This to me is going to be very attractive to a lot of players. This loop that I'm referring to, and I'm gonna go into it a little bit deeper uh, in a little second here. Um, but I think on top of the fact that we can now temper and masterwork affixes onto our equipment and weapons, I think inherently what's involved in tempering and masterworking creates this loop of gameplay that's going to be very appealing, provide a lot of repeatability in Diablo 4, and most importantly, it provides purpose in playing Diablo 4, which, if you ask me, never existed in the game before. To this depth, I guess is what I'm saying. So let's let me explain what do I mean by this itemization loop and why I feel it's going to be a huge win for part of the Diablo 4 player base. Um, so you can see here on the left are what I would refer to as some or most of the activities in Diablo 4. It's not all of them, but most of them. I understand there's bosses and now there's the tormented bosses, but bear with me here guys not everything is on here and also don't come at me with oh you missed this you missed that on on the loop here on the right i understand that but because of the lack of space that i had i only put talking points on these bullet points so hopefully it'll make sense when i walk through it so on the left you'll see kind of like the major activities outside of the bosses and the torment bosses that exist in Diablo 4, and that is the Helltides, Nightmare Dungeons, Tempering, The Pit, and Mastercrafting. Now, two of those five items that I've highlighted already existed in the game, Helltides and Nightmare Dungeons. Now, Nightmare Dungeons are still the same. Helltides have been beefed up greatly and um, super good right now. The changes and the upgrades, as I call them, made to the Hell Tides a lot more fun. And um, it, it's just a whole new different experience with the Hell Tides, a much needed new experience. So Hell Tides are a lot of fun and provide a lot of rewards. But when we refer to itemization, which is going to be big in season four, obviously it's the season of itemization. Okay, itemization is in Diablo 4, great. What does that involve? What do I need to do in order to temper and masterwork 
my gear and therefore customize and make my character stronger. And that's the premise of this video. What's entailed in being able to temper and master work gear. And so this is the loop as I refer to it. So if you do hell tights, as you know, you get all kinds of loot, all kinds of materials, but you also have the potential to drop temper manuals, right? Which I will discuss in this loop. So bear with me. When you run nightmare dungeons, of course, you get gear that drops loot, as I referred to it. You get materials, you get elixirs, you get all kinds of stuff, okay? I haven't put them line by line on here, um, but you get a lot of stuff dropping in nightmare dungeons as you do in hell tides. Hell tides, of course, if you open the caches, you get a lot of stuff that's not mentioned in this loop, but you do hell tides, you get loot, material, temper manuals. You do nightmare dungeons, you get loot, materials, and temper manuals. Now in my testing, when it comes to the temper manuals, my ratio of more temper manuals was in nightmare dungeons over hell tides. Now, I don't know if that was just my RNG or if it's heavily weighted more on the nightmare dungeon side when it comes to temper manuals. Now, that's important because in the next itemization loop is tempering. This is where we have the potential to add two more affixes to our gear, our weapons. And in order to do that, you need two things. Number one, you need tempering manuals. Now, tempering manuals provide us the opportunity to pick from a list of affixes that we learn through the tempering manual. So if you don't learn a tempering manual or find a tempering manual, you can't elect to have that affix on your gear when you're tempering, okay? So for example, and I'm gonna use just a generic example, if a tempering manual, let's say it was an offensive tempering manual, and it had vulnerable damage, crit damage, damage to close enemies. Let's just say all three of those were on one offensive tampering manual. Now, if I needed one of these affixes for my build and I never found that tempering manual, then I wouldn't be able to use it when I temper. I haven't found it yet. So in order for you to be fully tempering your gear and have all the different options, you need to find the appropriate manual. And there are offensive manuals, there's defensive manuals, there's utility manuals, there's resource manuals. But my point is in this itemization loop, you need to run hell tides and you need to run nightmare dungeons in order to find these manuals. This is how this loop is being created. Okay, now when it comes to tempering, like I said, you need the tempering manuals. You also need the crafting materials, right? There's a cost in order to temper an affix onto an item. That cost is from crafting materials, which you get from salvaging loot, gear, weapons. So those salvaging materials are obtained by playing the game which goes back to hell tides, nightmare dungeons, etc., etc. So as you can see, this loop keeps continuing and going and they're interconnected in a way. Now, when we talk about the next feature that's coming into season four, the pit. And in order to do the pit, the requirement is ruin shards, okay? Obviously you need to be a level 100, ruin shards, they suggest level 100, uh, but if you want to try it earlier, good luck with that. Uh, but the requirement is a ruin shard. Now, when I tested the pit, when you selected the tier right beside it would show one ruin shard. I would assume that was one ruin shard was a requirement, but I was being deducted three ruin shards for every entrance into the pit. Now, whether that was just um, 
misprint on the UI or whether that's the cost. At the end of the day, the bottom line is you need a ruin shard or shards, ruin shards to enter into the pit. And in order to get ruin shards, again, you need to do this loop. And apparently they drop anywhere in the world. I couldn't find any, any literature to specifically say, here's where you get ruin shards. They drop everywhere, okay? Also in the pit is when you get into the pit and you complete the tier within the 10 minute time frame, and you open the chest, you also get the materials required it's the only place that I'm aware of. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It's also where you get the materials needed in order to master craft gear. Okay. So again, there is logic here in the steps that you need to do and the itemization loop that'll take you around this loop over and over and over if you want to temper and master work your gear, which I can't imagine anyone not wanting to do because it's a form of customizing and enhancing your gear, making your character more powerful and also customizing it to how you want to play. So I can't see why anyone would not want to follow this. So that's the pit. Ruin shards to enter and it drops loot and materials that are required for other things, but also for master working, which is key. You need to grind the pit in order to master work. Then we get into master crafting and master crafting is where the requirement to master craft an item is number one. It has to be an item that's already been tempered. So, you cannot mastercraft an item that you have not tempered an affix onto. That's number one. And then mastercrafting also comes with crafting material requirement. Again, all obtained through this loop. Now, I, I'm not going to lie. Initially, when I read all the literature and the campfire chat, I thought, so master working guys, there's 12 ranks, okay? on a master working item. And it's one, two, three, all the way to 12. At rank four, one random affix gets a 25% buff. At rank eight, one random affix gets another 25, a 25% buff, random. And at rank 12, another random affix gets bumped 25%. Now, I initially thought our ranking was uh, impacted by just having the item equipped and playing the game and it would naturally through experience rank up but that's not how it works how master working works is you actually have to spend the resources and the material costs in order to go from rank one to rank two and you master work it now the first four ranks are a hundred percent success rate. Okay. So you will always rank up the first four and one random affix gets the 25% uh, increase, a random one. And you'll know which one because it's number value, the, the, the buff. So 150% damage for lack of a better term, it's in blue. So you'll see it in blue. Um, but after the, f once you hit rank four, and as you continue up the ranks all the way to 12, that 100% goes down. Um, so I think it goes from 100 to 70. Uh, so there is a chance for you to spend crafting resources on master crafting and it fail. Again, the, that's not why I'm mentioning it. I'm mentioning it because this is where I feel we get this itemization loop. And in essence, the pure itemization characteristic of the game and the mechanic, how it works in Diablo 4, is going to be, is going to provide a much needed loop 
of what players are going to need to do and follow and therefore grind the game and provide purpose to the game because you need to do all these different activities because doing one allows you the possibility of doing another. For example, running Helltides and Nightmare Dungeons hopefully will give you the materials in order to temper because you'll find the manuals. You'll be getting loot, which you're not going to keep all the loot. You're going to salvage the loot. Salvaging the loot gives you the crafting materials required in order to temper. Getting the temper manuals to drop in Helltides and Nightmare Dungeons and the caches that you open up gives you tempering manuals, which open up way more affixes of the pool of affixes that you have when you're tempering and so on and so on. Running the pit gives you the materials that you need in order to master work and so on and so on. So I wanted to highlight the fact that yes, itemization step forward with the season four year and in the testing in the PTR, I experienced that. Absolutely itemization, a big win in this PTR, but also another subset of that, uh, uh, something that is coming out of this, if you ask me, is the fact that now we have an itemization loop in Diablo 4 that provides purpose for players to play the game. And to me, that's a critical step forward as well, on top of the itemizational changes that are coming to Season 4. So I just wanted to highlight this, that this is, to me, a big thing that's going to be happening in Diablo 4. Now, I'm not saying that's it, game over, it's good, they don't need to do anything else. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this is another good step forward because when you have purpose in your grinding and purpose in your game, it makes players want to play the game, in my opinion. Um, so this is a subsequent outcome of the itemization changes, is the new itemization loop, as I like to call it. So let me know what you think. Am I off my rockers? What do you think? No, this loop doesn't exist. It's broken. It's this, it's that. Look, guys, I didn't get into the minutia of the tempering and the masterworking. We've discussed it 360 times over in the two days that I tested the PTR in my stream. Um, so I'm well aware of how things can be fine-tuned. But there is this new itemization loop to me that provides purpose. That's all I wanted to say. So let me know your thoughts. If you participated in the PTR, how's it going? How are you finding it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Get in the comment section. I would love to hear it. And I just wanted to put some positivity on top of already the positive changes with the itemization. Uh, I think this loop is going to bring repeatability to a lot of players that are playing Diablo 4. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. And if you could like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And as always, I hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.